see if Texas is open back up again. 100% Texas. Texas Rangers baseball. Does Nolan Ryan still play? <laughs> He's got to be like 70 now, huh? Greatest of all time pitcher right here. Hey, uh, yeah. could be softball. Could you imagine him on your softball league? Just saying. Gary Sheffield playing. Oh, I watched that show with his wife. She's a realtor. Here. I hear Gary Sheffield is mean, though. Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. How we doing out there? Good, good, good. I watched this other YouTube guy that flies planes on YouTube, but he's by himself, so he, you know, he just has the cameras on, and he always says, hey, "How's it going today? Good, good, good." And it's it's corny, but now I I get it. Hey, uh, welcome to the closing beats, a stock market update show that we do every day. We're a little bit different here, as you can tell. That's not a green screen, by the way, either. It's a, a whole deal, you know. We're financial advisors here, and uh, we just like to teach, we like to give updates. We like you to know that we're working for you, uh, whether you're a customer or not. We like to work, show what we're doing and looking at and focused on for the day. So uh, we're going to cover that here in our market update today, and I will start by saying happy stimulus day. Huh? We're going to start calling these like stimulus days. Take the rest of the week off. You got a check coming, right? Or some of you do. Uh, so... Yeah, that's passed. And so, uh, what was it, $1,400? Uh, and the caps, I believe, were tightened. So, uh, you like between, like married filing jointly was like 150 to 160,000 was your phase out range or something. So, a little bit tighter there. But uh, that's all going through. Old Biden's going to be signing that thing. If he, is it bedtime yet? Oh, wait, he's got, he's going to have to sign it tomorrow, right? <laughs> I got the look. <laughs> I got the look there, man. Oh, man. Okay, uh, let's get started. On the right-hand side of your screen, you see uh, the stock market for the day, right? Just, you know, it was a good day, depending on what index you're looking at. The Russell 2000 looking nice and strong there. I'll start with the Dow, though, if you don't mind. And uh, we'll go over here to the charts. we got new record highs. That's four days in a row that the Dow is up. It's positive by about 6% year to date. Uh, not too bad. Today, if you're looking inside there, it's going to be Boeing and the banks. So I'm probably going to say that a few times. you got Boeing hitting new 52-week highs. Uh, that momentum continuing in a more aggressive way there. You kind of see the... The, the Twitter chatter out there, people coming back to Boeing, getting excited there. And then you got Goldman Sachs, which was just one of many uh, banks that actually did well today. But in the Dow, those two were your biggest contributors overall. Uh, the Russell 2000 roaring away, by far the best of the major indices uh, in terms of performance year to date. It's up 16%. And um, today it was the small cap value area, like if, if you happen to break it into categories, a lot of people do, uh, or into factors, as you would say. Uh, small cap value was the excitement there, but um, I'll point out a couple things. Uh, that GME, your GameStop, all you people having fun with that, that sucker fell. It went from like, here, check this out. What do we got? I got to go five minute chart. This, this is five minutes. So every blip on your screen, if you're not familiar with candlesticks, every little blip is five minutes. So you got 5, 10, 15, 20, we'll say 25 minutes. It went from about 360 to 160. Let's we'll say, yeah, 360 to 170. Are you kidding me? Right? It had to be halted a few times because it fell too fast and then recovered somewhere in the middle. But holy cow, you like your volatility, people, huh? If you do, that's your that's your stock right there. A couple others inside of uh, the Russell 2000 today. I'm going to go Penn National, second biggest contributor uh, overall for the day, almost nearing 52-week highs uh, as well. That one's been doing really well. But a couple others I want to point out uh, just real quick because they're not names that make headlines often. you got Caesars Entertainment. The casino stocks. I don't know if you've looked at those. Everybody's focused on cruise lines and airlines, but don't forget those uh, casino stocks doing well there. And then Lithium Motors, uh, that's also 52-week highs and kind of an interesting breakout there. Right? Nice kind of consolidation, all looking good there. Um, but again, small cap value is all the excitement there. Let's go over to the NASDAQ here. Still hovering around the flat line year to date. If we were to draw a line right in here, that'd be plus or minus a half a percent for the year, just back and forth. It is officially pulled back to correction territory. And if you go into our research site, if you're one of those customers, you'll see a research post coming up tomorrow morning, I believe. 
We'll have the rest of it put together. We're going to talk about the forward performance of the NASDAQ. Very simple uh, data. We'll make it as easy and, and clean as possible. Uh, but the forward performance of the NASDAQ following a correction because we did it. That was a correction. And that's just a fancy way of saying 10% or more off of a high, right? So we did that. I think the NASDAQ 100 was like 11% or so. So uh, that'll be in there. And if you want to join, it's 13 bucks a month uh, and free for our existing clients there if you're interested. Um, much of the gains here today were uh, not, I should say, from Microsoft, uh, Apple, Amazon, your, your bigger names, right? The heavy weighted stocks in here, they just didn't play along today. Apple pulled back a little bit, nothing disastrous, but a little pullback there. Amazon off the 200 day, we talked about that one yesterday. Your action was in Comcast, Viacom, things like that. Really interesting. Comcast, the biggest contributor in the NASDAQ today. You don't normally see that, right? That was kind of interesting. Also, Costco. Got my order filled on Costco. We've been talking about that yesterday. Uh, out of Costco, just over a 50% profit. I like that 50% mark, so you'll hear me say that a lot for any short-term trades that we take uh, or like to, to talk about there. Weakness is going to be in the semiconductors. You can use the SMH to take a look at that. Otherwise, you can go into some of the different names, the popular ones like LAM Research. It's like a Christmas tree. And we say that as a joke, right? You, you've heard me say that because you have green, red, green, red, green, red, green, red, green, green, red. Right? It just, it's like lights on a Christmas tree or traditional lights on a Christmas tree. So we have a lot of that going on in semiconductors. Typically, volatility at highs is not a good sign. So that typically means that people are making decisions to take profits. Uh, buyers are a little less, uh, you know, uh, prevalent. And so you start seeing those pullbacks. Volatility at lows or in a downtrend, that's okay. When you see wiggling around like that in at the highs or in an extended uptrend, that's usually a cause for concern. So we'll keep watching that. Micron's another one, uh, more of a popular name there. Lost about 4% on the day. All right, if we take a look at the S&P 500, slight gain on the day. It's around 4% year to date. It was going to be banks and Boeing. If you're looking inside of there, I already covered Boeing. But if we go into the banks, uh, we're going to take a look at some of the bigger performers here today. Ah, just, just go this way. We'll do the sector breakdown here with that. You can see the financials on the screen, uh, the second best performing sector of the S&P 500 today. And financials really saw a broad rally overall. Zoom this out here so you can see that it's almost back to new highs. But you got a broad rally there. It is now up over the last month about 10% uh, if you were to take a look at the financial sector there. Um, so doing really good there. Energy is the only other sector, by the way, that can say over the last month, here's a good look at it, over the last month with a 10% gain or more, it's just financials and energy. And you probably could have guessed energy, so no need to focus on that one there. Uh, if we look at some of the names here today, I want to sort by your biggest gainers, uh, Franklin Resources, which is just think of it as, uh, Fr just think of it as uh, Ben Franklin, right? I just like to say that name. Um, so big blast off there, back to highs. Uh, they reported that their assets under management, you know, I was all excited. We, we hit 100 million, you know, somewhere around 110 now. And I was all excited, you know, hey, hey, we did it. 100 million dollars. Like, that's impressive. Listen to these guys. Assets under management, 1.5 trillion. I didn't know they had that much. Uh, 656 billion last year, now 1.5 trillion. Jeez, they're doing something better over there. I, maybe I should stop making YouTube videos and do whatever they're doing. But um, so that's where they're at. And they said, by the way, it's not all from market gains. They broke it down to show how much new money was coming in. Uh, they're killing it. So good job for them. And that would be your best performer in the financials today by far. Uh, that's a, over 10% gain or just about a 10% gain there. Um, also, if you're looking further into it, you're going to have Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo, one of the better performers today, hitting new 52-week highs. I haven't said that a lot for Wells Fargo. Upgraded to $47 from $43 at their rival, Morgan Stanley. Um, and then if you look inside here, regional banks are the other better performers. Fitboy, uh, SVB Bank, uh, you got Synchrony down here, which fell a couple spots before the end of the day. Um, but those were some of the standouts as well. I just kind of like to point that out because regional banks, uh, there's not a lot of them in the XLF because that's a large uh, money bank uh, ETF there. But there's a couple in there that we would still categorize as regional. So that's that one. If we go over to energy here. Um, energy was still the strongest, especially over the last five days out of all the sectors there. Oil supplies, uh, that number comes out on Wednesdays, you may know. So if you're looking at energy on a Wednesday and you wonder what, what's going on? Why is it so volatile? Uh, oil inventories come out at 10.30 on Wednesday unless uh, 
Monday was a holiday and then it'll come out on Thursday and there's a whole thing there. But uh, so anyways, you got crude oil inventories. We were expecting an increase in the stockpile of barrels of oil out there of 800,000 barrels of oil. Instead, we got an increase of 12.8 million barrels week over week, right? So that's not like since last year. That's over one week. So really impressive there. Didn't seem to affect the uh, uh, energy stocks at all. Most of them positive on the day. Um, and, and most of them, I would say, it held up nicely and probably deserved to pull back a little bit. You've got some really good runs in some of these stocks. You would say like, hey, give me a break. Let me, let me get in this thing here. But um, not too bad there. I, I think for the most of them, looking pretty good. All right, um, what do we have here? Tomorrow, yes, tomorrow on our closing beat, we're gonna go over some technical differences between a short-term pullback and a pullback inside of a downtrend. How do we decipher the two? What, what do we, when do we jump in and get excited and when do we hold back and maybe scale in a little bit? So we're gonna be covering some of those uh, names tomorrow for you just to do something different. We're gonna test a few different things to talk about here and see, uh, see what sticks. All right, let's go to new highs for the day. You're going to have 50 new highs on the day, all but two of them finished in the positive. You're going to see some familiar names. Altria just took off. I was talking about this the other day. It's a big move on Monday for Altria. That kind of continued on Tuesday. It's losing a little steam. You can feel it getting a little bit light here uh, up at highs, but still very impressive move for them. Uh, oops, there you go. Northern Trust, we're going to file... Uh, uh, fall back into that asset manager uh, camp. Uh, these guys just riding the coattails of uh, Franklin Resources uh, gains on the day today. Up about 1%, but it did briefly hit new 52-week highs. Amerisource Bergen. Hey, where have we seen this before? You guys know what I'm about to say? What, what happened here? The stock pulled back and then used up all kinds of energy and volume just to get to new 52-week highs. Do you think that this move, if you had to bet, and maybe some of you are, uh, do you think that this move over the last four days will replicate itself now that it made new 52-week highs? The question of the day. No, there's no chance, right? So this is that case where we said um, a stock using all of its energy just to get past a resistance area or new 52-week highs, something like that, is very likely to take a break, and there's no need to get all excited about it right now. Right. As it calms down, takes a little break, maybe there's something there. But this one hit new 52-week highs and is a bit misleading if you're going through those uh, highs, the highs list looking for ideas, uh, if you are. All right, Teleflex. I'm going to move this back because that went off just a little bit. Uh, kind of an interesting breakout here. Nice technical pattern. you got a stock that kept hitting those highs and just refused to pull back a little bit. Now it's breaking out. Good volume and closed near highs of the day. So that one's more interesting there. And, of course, Boeing. Boeing hit new 52-week highs. I put it on the list just because, hey, it's been a while, right? Something to celebrate there for them. All right, let's do uh, stocks in the news, and then I'll take your questions and get on out of here. Do our thing. H&R Block. You know what they do. H&R Block says, uh, well, we lost money. Uh, we lost $1.17, but we were expected to lose $1.29, so not too bad there. Uh, they blame the late start to the um, uh, tax filing season. They've done that before. They know what they know what they're doing there. Uh, anyways, you got TurboTax and all kinds of other people uh, competing with them. So still finished higher on the day. Uh, they had very positive comments going forward about how they think tax season is going to go. I believe they guided a little bit higher. Uh, you got ConAgra here. They're going to be selling Hebrew National, man, uh, the hot dog company. You know you know what Hebrew National is. You ever been to a baseball game? So what I like about this is it's breaking out of the downtrend here. So a lot of times when I look for stocks in the news. It's cool that there's some kind of news, but why? Why are we looking at it here? What are we interested in? Well, you've got a downtrend here that has persisted for like the last six months, puts in a higher low, gives you a hint that maybe the downtrend's over, and then breaking above this downtrend here solidifies that. Now, that was the other day, and you think, okay, maybe it pulls back, I get in. No, it's not going to wait for you. It's already up another 2% today. Downtrend breaking. People are expecting that now this thing is going to be back off to the races. And uh, best of luck to them for selling uh, Hebrew National. Did I get a price? $700 million bucks for the hot dogs. Do they sell more than just hot dogs? Just hot dogs. You don't know? Like sausage. What? The brown dogs? Hot dogs? Brown dogs is the name of them? Oh, more than hot dogs. Yeah, I don't think, I think that's it. My, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. Now I kind of want a hot dog. <laughs> okay. 
kind of feel like a hot dog. All right, man, let's move on. Speaking of hot dogs, Campbell's Soup. Don't ask what's in the soup. <laughs> it's like that kind of thing. <laughs> well, because you don't ask what's in a hot dog, right? Don't ask what's in the Campbell's Soup. Just trust that it's chicken stock. That's what you do. Um, you feeling sick? That's all you need, a little Campbell's Soup. Hey, here's a good little rally today after opening lower. So Campbell's Soup uh, reports earnings there. Uh, they raised their guidance. So when, uh, when they had their earnings call there, that's what kind of got things going for the day, up 2%. Otherwise, how do you get excited about this? I mean, it's fine if you own it, but like, how do you get excited about starting a new position in Campbell's Soup? Unless you could put on like a strangle or something, maybe I'll play with that. But I don't think uh, I don't think there's anything there. But anyways, uh, that was in the news today as well. That was earnings related. Toll Brothers, good for them. Good on Toll Brothers. They raised their dividend from 11 cents to 17. Yeah, 11 cents to 17 cents, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's over 50 percent. So they were good with that. These guys have also been generous with their dividends to quickly bring them back and raise them when they can. Uh, in tough times, they'll bring them down. Now they, they're quick to tighten up that cash. Uh, Roblox. There you go. Where'd it finish out at? 69.50. That's impressive. Uh, that's impressive. We talked about that yesterday. They were going public. Uh, makes the games. You can play the games. You can pay for the games. You can create the games. You can do anything you want with the games. Uh, Carrier also. That's uh, a stock that we happen to own. So we're happy to see that waking back up again. Uh, it's early. I don't know. Like, hopefully this is just kind of going to stay in this range here. It's been a great performer since they split, uh, but or spun off from uh, Otis and, and uh, Raytheon, but uh, just sideways at the moment. I thought that was pretty good there. They got an upgrade to 43 at Cowan, I believe it was. They were at 40 or something. So they think it's going to make new highs here over the next 12 months. And that's basically all I have for you. I will take a look and see ADP paying out 93 cents. Uh, Ruger. If you like your guns, paying uh, 71 cents. Um, Northern Trust paying 70 cents. Waste Management, 58 cents. NASDAQ, 49 cents. And Kraft Heinz, 40 cents. Albermail also paying 39 cents. That one just broke to highs. Yeah, recent. Uh, that's not the one I was thinking of. Anyways, they're paying out uh, 39 cents. All right, let's see what we can do. Uh, what we can do to answer questions here. Costco sell, did they used to sell Hebrew national hot dogs? I don't think so. No. No. Uh, they can't. Oh, well, that's good. Well, no, okay, then it's worth $700 million. That's what it is. Okay. You going to pay $700 million for a hot dog? I'll get some salami, bologna. All right. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, speaking of hot dogs, what name is the new dog going to be? You picking or Mrs. Jazz picking? Uh, the dog's name is Dizzy G, by the way. Yeah. Oh, it's at the bottom. Anybody get that? Dizzy G is the new dog. He's a lab Great Dane mix, and um, he likes to bite. <laughs> We're working on that. Yeah. Gonna invest your stimulus all on GameStop. Why not? How could I argue with that? <laughs> he says sarcastically, SEC. No. Yeah. What do you think of the Chinese tech stocks? They got a decent bounce yesterday. I think some of them started to bounce yesterday. Uh, not too bad. Baidu and, and, and Pinduo Duo and stuff. This is that volatility, though, which is, you know, is what we're living with right now. You got a sharp decline, a quick bounce. What happens? All these people in here, it's not a lot of them. They say, okay, I'm going to get out. I'm going to take my profit and run. So it's totally understandable to be a little bit of a, uh, a little uh, pullback there uh, just for today. You want to see that kind of be done, in my opinion. Is Costco a buy? That was just something we were playing for a short-term, kind of an oversold bounce, uh, and that's happening there. And I, like a, like you guys will see as we start sharing more of our short-term trades, um, I, I'm in and out quick. I, I just like to have more things going on. If it's quiet and I'm bored, I get frustrated. Yep. Yep. How's the flooring coming along in your house? Actually, that's where I'm headed next. I have to go pick up the dog take him there and teach him how to pick up tile and hand it to me. So uh, that's the goal. But uh, it is coming along. I don't know. I'd say three-fifths of the way through, if we could, if we had to guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They did sell Hebrew National. I believe they make their own now to save costs. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So if they did in the past, that's news to me. Um, but I have a feeling... You get a dollar fifty for a hot dog and a, and a coke. You, you know, I don't, how do you justify that? Oh, Hebrew National's got to make some money, but 
But then again, who does make Costco's hot dogs? Somebody has to. Hmm. How do you think the stimulus bill passing and treasury yields dropping will affect the market this week? Possible short-term tailwinds uh, for tech. Helpful for tech and has been. Uh, that's And that's good news for tech, by the way. Uh, they've needed that. But um, other than that, I mean, you see this a little bit of a rally on that uh, news there. How did gold do? Today? So gold came back just a little bit, too. About a half a percent there. Uh, silver. Because remember yesterday, gold and silver had good days. They're just looking to see. Silver up another 1% today. All right, not a problem. Not too bad there. Looking at the uh, yields starting to come down just a touch. Just a touch. <laughs> Need a lot more than that. And volatility calming down just a little bit as well. Yeah. Could Tesla go to 700 by Friday? Wow. It, you in a hurry? So was it 700 today? Does that not count? Was that not good enough? Seven. I mean, technically, could it do it? Yeah, it can rally. It can. It can trade in that much of a range, uh, for sure, in just two days. But will it happen? I don't know. Yeah. What's the uh, Nasdaq futures ticker again on the Think or Swim? It's forward slash NQ. Nancy Quebec, November Quebec. Ah. Yep. Yep. I love it. All right, I'm going to wrap it up there because uh, well, I, I could, you know, I should just stay. That means I wouldn't have to do any tile. I just I don't ever leave. <laughs> but I got to go. I got to do that. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks so much for watching here. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Do this all over again as we do. See you.